I will start out with the important task of um, selecting a chairperson for our group. Uh, so I guess first, is there anyone who's interested in being the chair? If not, we need to nominate someone. I was going to say, I was going to nominate you <laughs> since you have already figured it was a lot. <laughs> so, yes. That would be fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do we need to vote? Um, do we need to vote? Um, you probably should for the minutes. Okay, so maybe a nomination and a second, and then we'll vote. I nominate Chester as the chair. The chair is okay. All in favor? Excuse us have a saying aye. 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 <laughs> so I wonder, do we want to have a timekeeper? You know, I, I'm just, you know, because sometimes it helps. You know, like start to talk. How much time do you need? I need ten minutes. Okay. Are, are you familiar with timekeepers at meetings? No, not. not really. Oh. Because I would, I would, with meetings, I with committees, committees, I was on. There was always a timekeeper, so that it's up to you. I think why don't we take a look and see how tonight goes and the flow. I think we're still so new to so many of these things. I don't know how deep we're going to need to go. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm okay, and then in the future maybe we say, hey, we think this is a short topic, so we can time block. Yeah. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'd rather get the work done and spend an hour and a half here if we need to be versus say 45 minutes or an hour and have to meet multiple times so we can talk about that. Well, no, you didn't want that. <laughs> some, some groups do, so it is, it is the style some groups like to work, so. All right, so with that, feels very official. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, review the minutes from the May 1st meeting. We have um, the meeting minutes that Melinda, Melinda sent out, and then we have uh, the corrections from Judy. Um, so does, did everybody get a chance to get them and get a chance to review them? I did make the correction. You did make the correction yes. and then send that back out, so that's great. Anyone, any questions or concerns with the, the minutes? Great. Thank you very much, John. Yes, thank you for doing that for us. Can we make a motion to accept the minutes as corrected? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as corrected. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on. Let's see. So one of the things, so we're going really going through kind of old business um, to help us get through the, some of the requirements for the 194-C was um, we need to define the end of our assignment and term as a, as a group. So there were a couple of different options within that um, the document, the law. So one is that it would be, all right, so there are three options. So the members of the committee shall serve without pay for a term ending, and then there's these options. One is at the annual meeting of the district next following the creation of the committee, if the committee is created at an annual meeting, it's created afterwards at a school board meeting, or one year from the date of appointment, which would be our date from the school board, which was somewhere April 20th, April 15th or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was the 14th. 14th, okay. Um, if the committee is created at a special meeting, and then C is one year from the date of appointment if appointed if districts without annual, in districts without annual meetings. So I guess it, it sounds like, based on this, that we would be, this would be the one year, could we go one year from the, the warrant article vote? Yeah. Or we could go one year from the school board appointment? Uh, I would say it goes, it says at the annual meeting in the district next following, so following the creation of the committee, so. Technically, it would be at the next day of the meeting. It's just that we don't have that anymore. Right. Uh, it, would, it would be on the creation of the committee. So it would be at the deliberate session at that point. Discussion. So I, I think 
think that's our only, is that our only option because of how we're Well, required? I mean, I, I think it's pretty clear that you, you need to have some sort of plan submitted prior to that anyway. So, right. so and basically the end date of your committee is works off the um, application of the, of the plan itself. So, you know, your, your, your committee needs to have the work done by the time you get to the number of sessions. Just thinking that between the deliberative session, which is usually not well attended, and the vote, we have some communication during that time. So it would be helpful if we still had um, the committee at least doing some functions during that time. Right. So it would be difficult, I think, to sort of get it all prepared ahead of time in anticipation of that gap. So if we could have it end. A year from the date of appointment, that might be easier. Any discussion on the training motion? Sure. <laughs> so, motion to end the year after, one year from time of appointment, which would have been April 14th. Okay. People feel like that. Second. Okay. All in favor?
business model is, right? Like last time we talked about contracting these types of services versus mm -hmm. having part-time full-time superintendent. So is there a way for us to understand, or at least get some examples, or maybe about some things you have as well, have some examples of where the con a school district, or an SAU, has contracted out some of those SAU services um, to another SAU? Well, I'm trying to think if there are different models. I mean, there have been, when you say contracted services, that there are some, like I know that uh, there have been a couple of SAUs in the past that may have uh, contracted out their business end of it, the, the payroll and, and business administrator. Uh, I'm not aware of any presently that are using that model, but there might be some. Uh, and I can try to find out if there's a specific school district that you're interested in, I can try to fill in the gaps. But it, it's uh, like I said, most of this is if, if you if you look down through this, um, and especially the number of districts and towns on the right hand column, that will pretty much tell you whether it's it's a, a an all inclusive SAU or if they're if they're contracting it out. What other questions? So there's a lot of different models. Yeah. What other questions do people have on the SAU structure? As, as far as the, the duties and responsibilities of the superintendent or the, the, the uh, SAU, you can see by reading through this that um, they don't tell you how you need to do it. They just tell you that you need the service. So whether it's whether it's in-house, whether it's contracted out, whether you've got one person fulfilling all those duties or 50 people fulfilling all those duties, um, those are the responsibilities that fall under that umbrella. I think we had some questions as people went through because we did decompose this. Is this the right time to maybe ask some of those questions on these duties and some sure. of the where we had clarification? I don't remember off the top of their head what they had for questions off the left. Some of it was kind of like we just need to understand it more, I think, before we understand it. What My home printer was fighting me, so sorry, I didn't make copies for everyone. Um, so there was in the ed 302.01, um, folks were, were questioning how important is the, there was the implementation and review, I believe, of policy. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that, what that is and, and what it means. And it might be helpful actually if you step to that, the governance for student achievement. The, the, the implementation of, of policy in any district um, the school board is responsible for policy development. Um, and again, every school board does it a little bit differently. Sometimes it's the, the superintendent and, and the, the office of the SAU that put the policies together, bring them for review and, and revision, comes back to the superintendent or, or personnel and revise it and bring it back to the school board for final approval because the, the school board is the one that sets policy. Other school boards that I've worked with have done it differently. They, they've had a committee of school board members under the guidance of, of the superintendent um, and done the policy work and other uh, boards uh, still have done all of their policy work in school board meetings. So there's a variety of different ways that you can get that done, but the school board is the one that sets policy. The responsibility of the superintendent is to make sure that each and every policy is adhered to. So through the business policies, student policies, staff policies, uh, it's up to the superintendent one way or another, however that's organized, to set procedures to make sure that those policies are followed. Now when you say school board, you mean Robinsburg School Board and Summersburg School Board make their own policies for their own schools. Yep. And then Local. you help just make sure that they're followed. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. The local school board sets policy for right. their okay. own school district. Okay. Um, and then there was a question about governance 
Awards for Student Achievement as well. Mm -hmm. um, for Student Achievement, again, that's a responsibility of the superintendent to oversee um, what that is. That's curriculum development, that's staff implementation, that's instructional practices. Uh, and obviously, I'm not doing all of those things, I'm overseeing all of those things. So, a lot of times, there's the trickle down effect of, you know, that I, I supervise and manage the, my staff, obviously, and that, that influences the, the curriculum and the instruction. Uh, everything from in class lessons to uh, supervision, evaluations, uh, professional development, all of those things that are, kind of fall under the umbrella. And then again, how that's implemented, a lot of that responsibility in a small district like Rollinsford falls on the building principal and the staff. Um, and what's our current, uh, and what the most recent school board meeting you reviewed policies? Mm -hmm. Is it the, can you describe the model that's currently being used and how it's working? Yes, um, as far as I know, we get a lot of guidance on those policies from the state. Is it the school board association that? Yeah, the School Board Association puts uh, together model policies uh, and then they let us know on yearly updates on policies that are required, recommended, um, and, and uh, then they go to uh, my assistant superintendent who does a lot of policy work with Summersworth and Rollinsford, puts those policies together with the modifications from the recommendations from the School Board Association, then they come to review um, for the school board. So we're not from scratch by any means. Of mind. Usually we're reviewing changes and thinking of them, you know, as time evolves and needs change and things. Sometimes we do recommend. I think the drone policy was a unique one. Yeah, that was a new. That was a new policy that that is uh, unique to Rollinsford. That was something that came up that yeah. we followed through on. Um, so you can develop new policies if, if you choose to. If you want to take a look at at some of the policies just to get an idea on what they look like. Um, you can look on either SAU56.org or the Rollinsford uh, school po uh, website and under school board you'll see policies, click on policies and it will take you to all of the policies that are, that are up to date. And again, there's, there are fiscal management policies, there are school board governance policies, personnel, uh, instruction, um, student, community relations, um, and those are, you know, they're pretty, you're going to find that a lot of them are similar in, in every district, um, but they can be modified and unique to your own district. So we don't lose, we can have the amount of autonomy that they want. With Absolutely, because ultimately your local school board is still on the final. Yeah. So, and that's not going to change. Right. What other questions did folks have as you went through this? It was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I know it was a lot. Um, I will say that we were, there was a lot of consistency in our responses. So we, <laughs> which is fine, right? Because I think we're all trying to understand and read and whatever. So we went through each of the items that are in the 194-C, which has some of the rules, and then Ed 301 and 302, which has kind of another set of rules. So what we did is we, just for the public who's here, we went through those as a group, as a, individually, to look to see how important we thought it was as, a, as an item for us as a group, um, how much control we thought we needed, um, did we need a, like, tight rein control, or, or is it negotiable, or is it something that, you know, we could be okay with someone else doing that for us? Um, or, and also, how are we doing with it today? Because last time we met, we established a few things. We said we need to be cautious and, and mindful of the budget and the amount of money that we spend. We want to ensure that we don't, we maintain or improve the quality of services that we provide to our, our town. Um, and um, I think we're talking about the thing that we said was important last time, but those were the two, the two keys that I remember. So that was why we looked, or we asked to look through these that way. I don't know that um, we're going to come to consensus on anything, or, or we even need to come to consensus on anything with, with these tonight. 
Um, but would be interested to hear how you guys found the, the uh, exercise and any aha moments or questions that you might have had that we want to talk about with Dr. Kronowski. Yeah, so I actually found it extremely difficult um, and I didn't really answer all of them because I feel like they're all equally important and actually required by statute and um, I also feel like we're doing all of that well now and it's maybe just because I've worked closely with Dr. Godomsky <laughs> and the SAU team. Um, so I found it difficult to sort of rank them in importance or, uh, or anything like that. So that's kind of, it was a difficult exercise. Yeah. Disagree. <laughs> I... I'm the second, the first half of that anyway. I, going through, you know, there are, looking at it in terms of what's important, I, I could pick out a handful of things that if the SAU would, uh, did a poor job would, re, would be an emergency requiring immediate change. Um, but at the end of the day, everything on the list is legally required. So, <clears throat> we would need an SAU that does all of it, and I don't, I don't feel like, since we're not setting up a system piecemeal where we're saying, okay, first we're going to find a way to do this part, then we're going to find a way to do that part, I, I don't know that ranking it by importance is helpful. Yeah, I kind of agree, yeah, because these are requirements by the state and, you know, then the federal government is above the state. So it's not like we're going to pick out that I want you to do this 24 hours a week. And, you know, I think, as, like, you know, if we stay where we are or if we go someplace else, I think it's going to be a superintendent that, you know, knows what the requirements of the job are. Right, right. We're not going to tell, this, you know, the superintendent that we think number one is more important than number six. I don't know why we would do something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, when I went through the questions, I took it kind of, a, of an approach about saying, I agree, all these things have to get done in right. the statute. But from the Rollins, I, I tried to look at it from the Rollins for its perspective about, are these things that can come out of the SAU, just cookie cutter, we're going to put them in and we're going to implement these and we will we don't need to have a lot of control over these specific attributes, but are there any things within this list of responsibilities that Rollinsford, as a, as, as, a, as a school board, feels that we have to have service level agreements on, we have to have input into all this, we have to have a vote on some of these things. So that's how I tried to go through the list of questions. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it was a, we're not going to do this, or, or whatever, because we, we need to, right? <laughs> what the law says, the RSA say. But I thought for me it was helpful to understand, like, there's only so many hours in the day. There's only, only you wouldn't, I don't think, you would say there's 30 things in 40 hours in the week. I want you to spend one hour and five minutes on each of these things, right? So in some way there is importance because you do have to decide where to spend your time. Um, so for us to figure out where we want to focus and what we want to do with those areas that we want to focus, to, to your point, um, does it make sense to at least help us start to have that conversation? This is a way for us to start that conversation versus looking at eight things and go, yikes. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to look at. But I'm not sure why we're looking at it because if we subcontract this service out or bring in an in-house, they're going to do the job. It's kind of like if you hire a teacher, you know, there's this many things they have to do. And as the school board members, you're not, you know, going through each thing. They get observed and there's conversations and they're either hired or, or not. And, you know, you, you want, we want the whole package is what, that's the way I would feel. That, I think there's two things that I would suggest. Um, one being, remember, the, the duties of the superintendent. Um, I don't do all these things. 
I make sure they get done. So when you're when you're talking about either a person or a contracted service, um, it, it it's going to happen in a variety of different ways. So like like I look at finance, I, I don't write the checks, I don't do the payroll, I don't you know it, that that comes, but I have to make sure that that gets done. And you could say that about every single duty in here for the superintendent. The other piece I think that is important is in the next few months, you're going to look at a lot of different models, uh, whether it's a contracted service, whether it's going alone, whether it's joining somebody, whatever it may be. And as you go through that process, my suggestion is that if you're not comfortable with any one of these things and, and, and uh, the answer of how that's going to get accomplished, that's the question that needs to be asked. Okay, and if you're contracting a service with, um, I mean, I'm just picking something absurd. If you're contracting a service with Concord School District, uh, you know, you might want to you might want to ask, well, how, how are you going to logistically supervise our building, or, or uh, you know, make sure that the maintenance is, is all set. Um, you know, and each different model, I think, is going to raise some different questions. So, to just you know, I'm recommending that as you go through that. Um, ask those questions if you're uncomfortable with how that's going to be covered. Because these duties, you're right, it's not an option. <laughs> they have to be covered. But, for example, the, the SAU is in or maybe they are, but I didn't think they were responsible for the maintenance and capital improvements of the Rollins Street School Building. So uh, it, it's my responsibility to make sure that that's done. Okay. So, no, I'm not responsible for the maintenance. I'm not responsible for... Uh, the funding. I'm not mm -hmm. responsible for the staffing. Um, I'm responsible to make sure that that gets done. And it so, meets the state requirements, all of those kinds yes. of things. Okay. I mean, maintenance and capital improvement. It's, it's my responsibility to guide the school board and the school personnel to make sure that the building is maintained. Mm -hmm. There's a maintenance plan. There's a capital improvement plan in place. All of those things are my responsibility. So how that gets done is different in every district. Yeah. And so I understand when you meet, when the two school boards meet, the SAU 56 board, is that what you're called? Yep. You don't necessarily vote on, well, Rollinsburg needs new stairs. Like, that's not something that's brought forth at those types of meetings, right? So right. we're not losing any. Yeah, you've Autonomy got, over what's happening at Rollinsford Grade School. You've got or, three entities. Yeah. You've got the Rollinsford School District. Right. You've got the Summersworth School District. And then you've got SAU 56. Right, right. SAU 56 is just my office. Right. And when the joint board gets together, the only decisions they make are decisions about my office. And I think that's something the public doesn't know. I didn't know that going into this last, until last meeting, until you clarified that. The joint board <laughs> does not have any say and we're going to cut two positions right. in Rollins exactly. for and I Or think, you're going to teach this. Yeah. Or they, they don't have any authority. <laughs> I think it's hard for people to wrap their head around right. that because they associate it with the children and what they are, the services the children are receiving and it has nothing to do with, you know, I mean, right. you set it all up, but right. Right. It, it's strictly administrative, and that's an important point yes. to get across. So I think Joe sent us this afternoon a great email to get us started on that communication, which I think is on. Yeah, uh, that's, we definitely, yeah definitely. Because I think, I think that Foster's article, that's pretty not a, I think that Foster's article kind of yes. sent up a lot of alarm bells and panic, and I think it even, incorrectly stated about the SAU 56 building, so I, I agree, I think some communication to the... Yeah, so let's, exactly. let's make sure we definitely get to that, but yeah. on the Sorry. topic of Foster's, congratulations to you in the Summers Earth School District yes. for that <laughs> great <laughs> award for the middle school, that's yeah. really awesome. Um, so that's really neat. So, so that's a positive foster. You're referring to the one that was out back, right? Yeah, the one that I think that that started the whole. Yeah. There was a lot. I of think their announcement. Yeah. yeah. So, and that may be part of our strategy. Right? It, so we need to go back to fosters and do something in right. digital communication. Yes. Yeah. But I think my point is that everyone knows, remembers that the first the article. article. Right. Well, in that, so in that breaking apart. Right. Is that the one you refer? Yeah, I think so. But I think yeah. it's just a, 
for me, I need to remember if I say 56 is not controlling what's happening with our Rollinsford students. Right. Directly. Really, everything we do here will be seamless to the students unless right. you know, there's some catastrophic thing that happens. Exactly. It's not going to affect anything. Um, and that's what people need to hear exactly. yeah, to make them comfortable to understand this whole concept. Absolutely. And so what we talked before, so it's not only the students, it's the building, it's the, it's the teachers, yep. it's the principal with oversight from the SAU on all of those things to make sure we're adhering to the various administrative right. requirements. Is that a, a little recap on? Yeah, on yeah. And, and, and I mean, the SAU office, our only function is to make sure that your school district is running a program. Right. We, so, we have to have the implementers in place to make sure that this stuff is right. happening. Right. Because I've had some people ask me, let's say, uh, you know, if you contracted your SAU services through Dover, oh, I don't want our kids to have to move and go to a different right. school. It has nothing to do that's, with that. That's hard to understand. It is. Right. You, yeah. could, you could contract your SAU services with Laconia right. um, and not change anything in your school. Right. And the example about Dover would also be if people had a concern with it to say, it doesn't mean you have to implement the Dover curriculum on how you teach the students. Right. That's it. And I agree. I think, I mean, I'm coming in myself trying to get an understanding of this, so yeah. I can only imagine people who've read an article. <laughs> exactly. Right. So I think we, we should definitely loop back. I have your email. I think we should loop back to that. And I think there's a couple of different communication paths that we, as we did last time, we should, we should definitely talk about. But I want to go back to the, the building in, in for a second, though. If we weren't watching, so the reason why I think this is important in knowing all the components of the responsibilities for the SAU and the superintendent is that we would want to be watching to make sure that we know that we're putting something in place where we would have building management, we would have or oversight, right, and, and that they wouldn't fall by the wayside. So we would need to make sure that we're caring for those things, especially if we piecemeal some things out. And some things may be done today because of the people who are in the rules versus the role, um, the, the rules, right, or the, the laws. So someone might be, you might be really good at finance and say, like, I don't know, cut the checks every month. But <coughs> that, right? Probably not what you do. But, you know, you could run into a situation like that. We don't want to fall and not have that available to us. So, um, so what I'll do on this is I'll get an email copy back up to everybody so at least you can see what everybody said. It was pretty varied uh, and across the board, but I think some of the most critical things we should be making sure that we're, we're looking at them. And I think that the conversation about control and whether or not we could we could contract elsewhere or we could have a negotiation for, for having services done for us on our behalf. Um, I don't know that we understand the economic possibility of that yet, but um, it is an option based on what we talked about last week, right, or last two weeks ago. Anything else on this? I, I'm always, uh, um, that control, I'm not quite sure what it means, because, you know, the federal government says you have to do this, the state says you have to do this, the school board, you know, kind of, enforces along with the SAU that everybody has to be certified and we need to be doing this in Common Core. So what is the control that is referenced here? Can you speak, you speak yeah. to it quite a bit last time. Yeah. The, the, that, that the, the, the control would be anything to do with my office. Uh, if we wanted to spend, you know, the SAUs can't own property. They lease property, so. But Somersworth owns that building. But SAU 56 does not. Right, because I read through all the minutes and I saw that part about the roof. Right. And it still wasn't, you know. That Somersworth owns that building. Uh, but yet the SAU, SAU board wanted the, the Rollinsford and I guess Somersworth to pay for a new roof, but that's not part of it. Well, there, there's been a, a, an ongoing agreement about that building. Owned by Summersworth, but the SAU doesn't pay rent. Right. Typically, an SAU office would pay a lease payment, a rent payment, uh, and 
SAU 56 is not paying anything for that building. Who's maintaining the building? Um, SAU 56 does in our budget. Interior uh, and exterior. Well, there's been minimal maintenance. Uh, you know, that was the discussion on the roof, I guess it was a year ago, two years ago. Um, yeah, Something like that. There was a discussion about, about the roof that, that didn't go anywhere, but the maintenance itself is Minimal. So would that be something that you would want a vote? Because when you say no, <coughs> oh, you're actually talking about a seat at the table, right? It would, it would be a vote on a lease, but if there's a lease. Uh, it would be a vote on, on staffing, hiring, right. dismissing, uh, But we're raises. always going to be the minority. I was thinking the same thing, too. So we're always going to be the minority. <laughs> you know, whoever we, if we... You know, stay with Summersworth if we go someplace else. So, you know, that vote, yes, we can vote, but we're probably going to be outvoted because we're so small on that team. Unless we're on our own, right? So if we're on our own, that's one. The other is we're a component of another SAU. Or we like have we are service, now. like we are now, right. or we have services provided to us from another SIU, but we do not have any vote right. in the matter. Yeah, we would just be like contracting it out. Right, right, right. So, I, you know, I just wasn't sure because you know I thought about. Well, you're it. absolutely right. I mean, the size difference. That's is, what that it, 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 It's it's difficult. Right. Um, and you're right, the control in, in the state of New Hampshire, you know, the, the, everybody likes local control, but you can only have local control if you can afford it. So. Right. <laughs> and the state is not going to let us fall by the wayside if, you know, this disillusion happens. The state, I believe, is not going to let it happen unless everybody has a plan. They're not going to leave somebody out in the cold. Right, right. They're, they're not going to do that. But they're not going to carry us along for years. No, I mean, they're, not, they're, not, they're not going to tell you how to do it. Right. They're not going to tell you how to do but it. But they won't let you break apart unless we have a superintendent. Or, or unless we kind of, you know, we have the services, let's call it. A, or a plan for the services. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need, necessarily need to be up and running for everybody. It to just say, has okay. to be a feasible plan. They're not right. going to tell you how to do it. They're not going to pick it for you. Right. Um, they're just going to make sure that you, uh, you the town of Rawlinsford, has a plan in place. Right. Because we would not want to have a plan. We would not want to have We can't not at this point. Right. That's, <laughs> that's, why, that's why there's an end date. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So fair enough. I mean, but there is a place where we could have full-on control. There's a place where we could have no say. And then there's a place where we could have some say. I think... With the recent uh, reassessment in this town, I think people are going to be a little leery if we have to spend more than we're spending now for the same services. So that I think we need to keep that in mind for the stakeholders. Yeah, and that's definitely one of our things, right? We said we don't, we want to be mindful of costs. We want to understand what we're getting for that two hundred thousand dollars, which varies between one hundred and eighty-three this year and two hundred. It has been upwards of two hundred. Um, and we don't want to sacrifice the services. The piece that we do know right now from the information that's been shared is that these services are being provided for us and we are meeting the standards. We do pay 16% of the total amount, but we don't know what percentage of the services we, so we pay for 16%, but do we receive 16%? And how is, this, how is that determined? Is that student population? There's a formula of, of uh, student population as well as your assessed value in your community. So the, there's a there's a state formula that they put all of that in and come up with a percentage. And right now it's right around 16%. Yeah. So the question that I was asking myself from a financial perspective over the past week, and as I read some of the other schools that have withdrawn, I think I read Mananoc, and you chair a couple mm -hmm. others. Um, the what you pay and what it would cost us to do it on our own may not be the same. Um, so we need to figure out what that gap is. And I don't. I, I guess I'm looking to us to talk about how we would could start to understand that. Well, I think this, the, it, 
All of these services and responsibilities um, will be covered in a variety of different ways. Now, what that looks like and the depth of your services are going to differ. I mean, obviously, right now you've got a full service SAU for 16%. I mean, you've got an assistant superintendent, a superintendent, a bookkeeper, business administrator, support staff, homeless liaison. I mean, you've got a full service SAU for 16%. Now, do you use all of those people all of the time? No. Are they available all of the time? Yes, they are. So if you go to a part-time superintendent, a part-time business administrator, a part-time uh, special ed director, you're going to lose some of that full service feel. Um, but do you need it? That's up to you to decide. Um, if something comes up, is it going to be handled and completed? Yes, it is. Is it going to be a different way? Yeah. I mean, I'll give you one example. Right now, if there's a, a staff issue, then we'll do a lot of investigations internally. The, super, uh, the assistant superintendent, a lot of time, will do the investigation, give the information to me. The superintendent, I'll make my determination, and we'll move from there. If you've only got a part-time superintendent for two days a week or whatever it comes out to, and it, something like that comes up, you may have to contract for a period of time, whether you do it with an attorney or whether you do it with a local administrator or something like that, you may have to contract those services. They're still going to be provided. Or some kind of an adjustment with the superintendent's time in, in doing something like that. So it's just going to look a little bit differently, um, but all of those, those duties are, are going to be done. Are we still we're meeting on a summer work right mm -hmm. so is that kind of like to me personally it feels like we should stay and try to work this out with them before we delve into all of this and try to figure out costs and stuff all that bigger picture stuff but it, i think part of if you when you read through their notes they believe they're paying a disproportionate amount compared to the services that they're receiving so we need to understand those services so that we can oh, have absolutely. from a cost yeah. perspective yeah. as well. And we have to look at the options because of the the vote the, the warrant article. So we have to look at options. Absolutely. I, I don't know. I don't know if maybe today we spend trying to game plan how work that discussion is gonna look like, maybe. That is on the agenda. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yep. to jump ahead, but Yep. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, what other, so the other piece, so we talked about the SAU list of services, we talked a little bit about the finances. I, I wonder what the group feels about understanding our component, and I know the full-time versus part-time, but is how, how do we go about understanding what pieces of services, like, does the Summers or School District have set 89% of the special education spend versus 11% in, in Rollinsford. I, I don't know how we get a sense of that, because I can see it on the budget, right? It's, it's clear what we're paying, but I don't know what we're getting, and I know it's a difficult question. Yeah, and we looked into that, because obviously the Summersworth was for all committee asking the same same type of question, and how do we track the percentages, and you know what are we paying for? Uh, difficult question to answer because there are certain times that we might be spending virtually the whole day on Rollins for business. And then there are other times that we're going to be spending the entire day on, on, on Summersworth and the reality is that oftentimes it's fragmented back and forth during the day on different tasks. Um, but it, everybody in my office that I spoke to and asked them, you know, Give me a ballpark on what you think about the percentage and the time. And everybody thought that, you know, without going through and punching the clock every time we change tasks, um, they thought that that was overall pretty accurate. You know, the 16 percent, 84 percent. Because we're only talking about the grade school now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, mm -hmm. the grade school plus Marshwood students. I mean, we do have some responsibilities over there too, and budget development, and setting up transportation, and special ed, and those sorts of things. So. So how, do you talk to Marshwood often? Do you talk to them once a week or? 
Um, when needed, um, the special ed director and special ed crew probably have more interactions uh, at certain times of the year when, when we're doing IP. transitions, IEPs, those types of things. Uh, and occasionally, from time to time, I'm interacting with the superintendent of Marshwood when, when we're having, uh, whether it's budget discussions or tuition discussions or transportation issues or parent issues or, you know, something like that. So, uh, you know, it's hard to answer that I do it once a week or twice a week. Yeah. You know, some weeks I might be in contact with them five times. Other weeks, not at all. I mean, it was my sense, and it seems like in the discussion, kind of a high-level discussion you've had with your staff, is that 16, 20 percent sounds fair. Maybe it's even 14 to 20 percent sounds fair. But it's not like you're spending 40 percent on Rollinsford. And so it doesn't seem like we're really out of whack from a, from a percentage basis of what Rollinsford contributes to running the SAU. I, I think it's... And it's a question, how much time do you want to spend to really get it into a spreadsheet where it adds up and it comes out as 16 or, or 18%? Yeah, I would say that's fairly accurate okay. on, on the, what's really going on. Mm -hmm. So it's a half a day to a day a week uh, yeah. amongst all your staff. And it makes sense. I mean, right? And that, that's, to me, the advantage about a larger SAU is that you have the economy of scale versus you try to do anything in-house. Right the level of services you're getting now, handling, and it's, it's always like anything. It's easy to run it when things are perfect, when you have a personnel problem, when you have yeah, something else goes wrong, yeah, it breaks, that's when things break. And right. you thought you saved a lot of money over the past three years, which you blew through within right. two months. Right. I, I agree. I think, you know, as opposed to having our own one or two days a week, I don't see the benefit. I, I'm not... I wasn't advocating for one or two I'm just saying from a general math perspective, we're getting on paper, yeah. you know, six. Even, the, even the, 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 uh, if you're talking about one or two days a week part-time, it may be a flexible model where at certain times a year it might be three days a week or three and a half days a week and other weeks a day. Right, um, but then you know, something think, happens to that person and you know, they have an accident or something happens, they have to go away, where are we? Yeah, I'm not suggesting you go one model or the other, I'm just yeah. trying to the tell you the cons. Yeah, because I think about the pros and cons also. Right. Yeah, and I think once we get to, you know, what are those models, and what, you know, is it a, a part-time, 50% superintendent, 100% business, mm -hmm. And it, I don't know what that looks like from a math perspective if it's even feasible to do that for Because on the list here, like um, Chester has a part-time mm -hmm. superintendent and Barnstead has a part-time businessman, business admin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there are quite a few um, groups who have part-time. I, I live in Barnstead. Yeah. And Barnstead has a um, part-time superintendent and Alton has the same, and then they both go into Prospect Mountain High School, which is a joint management agreement, and they also have the same. So it's a kind of a different model. But Chester's like that too. They've got a part-time superintendent, part-time business administrator. Yeah, you know, you've got quite a few of those. So I think as we start to understand, we, we, you know, we we can look at schools that have gone or school districts who have gone through the withdrawal process, which I think is another thing that we were going to talk about. Um, but then there also may be those different models, understanding how well they work and how, how well they don't work. Like, what is crisis management look like when you have a, you know, 50% part-time person? I don't know. I don't know that we know. You know, how does contracting work when you have a 30% spike in healthcare costs? You know, it's so, you know, those are probably some things that we'd want to understand if we're going to understand the big of what our options are, because um, I don't know that we can we can talk about it all day long, but we can talk to people who may, may live it, right, because if, if people exist in all these models, once we get maybe a little further down the road, I agree, we need to get through the, the summer's worth conversations and figure out what we want to, you know, we could walk away from, from that with some sort of agreement on where we go forward, but we still need to do our due diligence. Um, so I think there was one other um, 
question that we have for you, Dr. Kodomsky, which was around the districts uh, with recent experience um, withdrawn from the same use. And I don't know if the person should have a different name, should have a first name, last name, Bernadette, someone with the. Oh, Barrett Christina. Barrett Christina. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I don't know if you have some names for us to, uh, some other schools to look at. <coughs> The ones that recently, recently. pulled out. Um, I think if there were any recent ones, you had the Franklin Hill one. Right. Um, I mean, the, I, I put that one in basically because that's similar to your situation. Right. Um, I can. So if you could just follow up and, I can find out. and see if there's anything else, that would be really helpful. I think. Um, just to see if there's something a little more recent. I think I've found yep. this one like five years plus. So, um, thank you. So, any other questions about the information that Dr. Gadomsky shared with us? For this, we're in the audience, the public who are here. Um, we can, and we're going to talk in a few minutes about communication and sharing information out. There's a lot of paperwork that's been shared with us and a lot of information sharing that's happened over the past couple of weeks. So we want to share some of those resources with you so that you can understand the rules and laws that we're, we're trying to follow or working through. So, um, so with that, do you, would you like to talk about communications in general first or would you like to talk about the summer work meeting first? I think those are the last two things we have, and then whatever our next meeting is going to be. Those are the three things. I think communication in general. Communication in general? Sure. Yeah, but the uh, summer's worth is the last thing we talk about, and yeah, that will be fresher in our mind when we go to the summer's worth meeting. Great. Um, so let's go ahead and, Joe, would you mind? Would you like to have kind of run that conversation? Sure. You sent us a bunch of stuff this afternoon. Did um, everyone get Joe's email? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So I didn't bring a hard copy of it, but in general, other people might have questions that you know that the people in town either with children in the school system or taxpayers, and obviously everybody both, would have basically the education, which I find is what we're going through right now. So those were kind of my questions for myself personally to, to understand. And then, um, you know, while we're talking here as far as um, maybe what we should do here as far as whether it's just, whether we address it just by frequently asked questions, which I've always found to be helpful. But to say that, um, you know, where do we post those? Do we, you know, you can send something home with the students, you can do a clarification. I think based on this Foster's article, maybe at some point when we get to a, a point where we really have an understanding of what's happened, we should maybe bring that reporter back in and get them to, you know, write an update to it. I don't know if that's possible. Um, as far as the town website, the town email, process it, and then I said take home for the, for the students. Um, do people feel... But see, the take home for the students does not fit enough with... Oh, I know. And that's why all those other things are important, too. Not everybody's on the town communication. Right, but the mail, whenever the, when the elections in March, okay. that when we got those big sheets in the mail, I thought yeah. those were great. All right, that's, that's another... Uh, the school yeah. board sits yeah. right up. Yeah. Yeah. That's a couple things. <laughs> contribute. So prior to the vote, the school board did an FAQ on some of these questions. So maybe we have kind of a head start on some of them. Um, I love the mailers too. I've also discovered much to my chagrin that not a lot of people really read them. They're um, there though. They're, they're, they're there. You're looking at them walking down the driveway. You know, what's this? And, you know, so yeah, I, I think the bottom line is that you have to have a lot of ways. Everybody's going to yeah. look at the stuff differently. That's the town email is a great idea yeah. because it's free and it goes yeah. to a lot of people. And the email are also. Yeah. Um, we post our FAQ on the SAU um, website. And I don't know if they get a, get a lot of clicks. <laughs> they probably don't. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, but we can put them there also. Um, but I can send around the one that we did prior to the vote just as kind of a, a stepping off point if that's helpful. It doesn't answer all these questions, but it does hit on some of them. So yeah, so that was very much a starting point. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want, I can start just to collect them and maybe we can find out. There might be 
write the answers to them already. You can cut and you know, divide and conquer as far as putting some answers together then as well as you know, kind of a, a review and a quality check before we do all of these different different channels. Um, and I guess I'll ask to the residents who are here if, you know, I'm not sure what the best way, maybe they should send you the email or whatever, but if, if people have questions about, you know, about this whole process that could help you understand it better or help people that you're talking to, you know, we should get those in and we'll include them. Okay, so I, I think it's important for people. Why don't we do this? Why don't we, um, we talked about some mechanisms, like a couple others, and I don't know if anyone else does as well. Um, and then let's talk, and then let's go through the questions that we already have, and then we can start to ask for other feedback for those who have taken their time to be here. So I think Facebook is, is another mechanism where we could create a page um, where we could at least post information on meetings, updates information, um, and potentially take in questions. We may or may not want to engage in conversation on those pages. However, it is a way that people do communicate nowadays. So it could at least be a way for us to outwardly put and share information. Um, the other thing that I thought, because I think, um, Shelly, you had said last time, like not everybody's going to get the stuff going home from the school. I said, well, could we do flyers at the transfer station? Or, you know, <laughs> something that, you know, we know people hit here, here, and here. Um, or any other upcoming, you know, it's too early. It, it's way too late to do something for like the, the duck race. Duck race, yeah. But when the uh, Wentworth House has, you know, I think they get a big turnout there. If we just had a flyer on yep. the table, take it. Absolutely. You know. So I think there's some other community-based things that we can do. Um, the other mechanism I think is good old New England face-to-face -face meetings. You know, yeah, um, yes. you had talked about having a meeting, and I looked and thought about like three different reasons why we have meetings. One could be to explain the process and really have an open dialogue. We may not know, we won't know all the answers, but at least we could talk to the RSA, why we're here, what we're doing, in our process. And then there's going to be a point where we're wanna, gonna wanna gather input and feedback. And then also, once we get to a point before we make a final recommendation, we're probably gonna wanna maybe narrow down and share, hey, this is where we're headed. So we can get some, you know, ideally we'd be getting some head nods because we'd have included people and been inclusive throughout the process. There's also one meeting that's required. Yes. Um, um, it's that would be in addition to it, prob it would need to be, right? It's like the town, it's like if there's a budget meeting and there's a school. Well, there's a town, there's, there's by RSA and withdrawal, um, you're required to do a community forum in your own community and you're required to do one in the other community as well. And they're required the same. So uh, those forums are outlined in, in, yes. the, if you look in the timeline information that I, I gave. I think you like February, so, March time. Is there an upcoming town meeting that we could possibly get on the agenda for 10, 15 minutes to go over some of the stuff, but then hand out the flyer? Because we're SB2, there, there isn't. Oh, oh there, okay, that's right. There aren't upcoming um, meetings, but there are other places. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The deliberative, that's it. In March, right? right. Yeah. Okay, so we missed that. Yeah. Um, but you so, could hold a community forum. Right, right. And I think that's important. We can almost, yeah. I mean, I, I was thinking about the timing of that and maybe stop right now because I think we're all still struggling with this ourselves. But I think we're better off getting it out there and letting people understand what's going on. Yeah. And, now, and then from there, we might get some more information and maybe do one more follow-up. So I guess maybe what's on the table is, do we want to set a preliminary town meeting? communication session with people if they want to come and what would be the topics we want to cover. Maybe it's just as simple as doing the FAQs on site, but um, and then really getting people's feedback. So the following one we can make it we think it's worthwhile to do an update. Do you want to plan it? Probably plan it out in the June time frame, right? Like mid Probably mid -June. before the I'm sorry, July. Yeah. Before the summer gets too. So I'm just wondering if it might be worthwhile to do a written communication first to maybe clear up some of the misconceptions that, that people have and that we had also prior to the forum, mm -hmm. um, just to, you know, for the people that do read the information, um, maybe 
save a little bit of time yeah. explaining all that and maybe we target the end of June for something like that um, which could then set us up based on the feedback so we'd he need to have a feedback mechanism put in place with that communication mm -hmm. um, based on that yeah. and we could say all right there's a lot of demand there's a lot of questions let's go ahead and hold the meeting let's get the meeting and be you know be prepared for it but also don't hold it if it's just going to be us talking right, yeah. now, right? <laughs> So do we want to pick a date for the written communication? You know, to have something like that go out in those different channels that we, that we talked about. I mean, I mean, we could probably just start with the FAQs that right. we have now. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and, and what you already have out there. Yeah. And, I'm and happy and to write some of it up if, if that's helpful. Okay, so maybe the two of you could partner. Sure. So why don't you, you want, do you want to share with folks what the questions are and then we can Grab some input from folks who are here and any of us who had other questions. Holy, what's an SAU? <laughs> um, you know, why do we need to do this? What services are, are covered? And I think even on that question, when I was looking through this, I don't think we list all of these. I think we kind yeah. of just give a concept of, of, of what we need to do there. How, I think, how does it affect my child's? How does this withdrawal could affect my child's uh, education? What do we currently spend on SAU provided fit services for SAU 56? Do we anticipate a change in the cost for SAU services? I mean, that's kind of, we don't, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's part of the process. And, uh, will the school tax rate change if the withdrawal goes ahead? Don't know yet. And um, what are the goals of, of the withdrawal committee? And maybe other people who have some other questions in there. I had thought, um, what is the process? So sharing. What is the process we're going to be going through? Um, who's on the committee? So, you know, who are we? And it's not that we have any superpowers, but it'd be good for people to know us when they see us in town. And then, how will you take in public input? So, how are we going to take feedback? Those are the other questions I thought of. Anyone else have anything else in public comment? Okay. I'd say if you think about something, just do a response to my email, we're all on it, and yeah. we'll pick up something. So let's ask the folks in the audience, Carrie, I'm sorry, I don't know, I don't know everybody's name, so we're getting better. And Charlie, Nancy, Carrie. My name's Chris Reichus. Great. <coughs> oh, I know the name. I have a couple of things. <laughs> okay. First of all, are we just assuming we really are going to do a split? Not okay. I, good. I think that's sort of important. And the other thing that I might suggest that we have used quite a while ago, we had like little coffee clutches. And as the process goes on in, in neighborhoods, and pick one person, they would invite their neighbors in, even seven or eight people, and then someone who knows what they can at least can talk about and get questions, then they would visit. That would make it more intimate, and you would have probably better response. A meeting at the end of June might be a little <clears throat> not as filled with people as you might want it to be, uh, but that's that would be my as far as getting the word out. Um, it does. It's it, it makes it harder when we have to do it. It makes it harder for the for the people who have to do it. But usually we went in twos and. Um, enough neighborhoods and uh, everybody brought a little food and it was okay. And it may not work for all neighborhoods, but I'm sure it would work in Stockdale and I think it would work in, in the Karras. And if you take the major neighborhoods, then it would probably work. Face-to-face okay. -face sometimes is better than a fly. <laughs> Any questions based on what you just heard that you would you would want us to ask as well, or answer? You mean as far as going to um, <clears throat> the coffee clutch or something? The withdrawal process in and of itself. Um, when you consider the percentage, um, I'm concerned, especially from the special ed part. Um, it's nice being able to call the special ed director and says what is going 
what do we need to do right now? And that communication between the central office and our special ed department is very important. And the meetings that take place has a special ed person coming to all of those meetings. So that I would be a little worried about farming out somewhere. Um, and I've always found that I've been in the district now a long time, and we've usually had very amicable uh, relationships with with each other, and we know what part we play. It's just a little, little, a little part, but just doing checks, me being able to call up and say, "Listen, I need to take more of my check, or I'm going to pay more than income tax." <laughs> so you know, I mean, it's those kind of things that as a building we have access to and that I would be afraid I can and I think honestly if we I think we'd pay was 150,000 or whatever even part-time superintendents even part-time business people I don't think we're going to get covered with the amount of money we have yeah so that's so it varies, but it's 180 to 200, so we weren't we weren't far off. But yes. just so you have the, the numbers are going to share with us. Thank so you. that's just from someone who works there and yeah, much appreciated. Has worked there for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the name. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions for Mrs. Precious? Understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and I think that we need to. I think that there's a, there is such a fear going on now yeah. that that the education is going to suffer, and of course the education is not going to suffer. I mean, you can't let it suffer. Right, right. The, can I just one other thing that is one thing that, the other thing that's going on right now is the possibility of our sixth graders going to Marshwood. Right. Some people are sort of putting the two things together, yeah, they are. and so it's really important that those somehow try to remain separate so it doesn't get more confused. Well, I think the education for us, for us being for me personally, was it doesn't matter if the sixth graders go. We we still, as an SA, as a school district, have responsibility for those Correct. students. So it it really. If, once you understand that, it quickly takes that off the table. But until you understand that, you're like, well, what? They're going to school. On, they might be going to school in Maine. No, I think, so, it's, a, I think it's a good question it is. because to, to get it separated. Because I know in the town yeah. meeting, some people didn't have an interest in doing it at all. Some people thought it would be better. But I think to let people know that those are two separate processes, and this is not doing anything for the sixth grade. That's not it's, our it's take it off. Don't bring those questions <laughs> to us. I think some people already think we voted and decided it yeah. based on last vote. Well, it did. <laughs> it actually did, but it, 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 it was considered to be advisory. advisory. Yeah. Or advisory. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, is that even if the kids did go, we're still as a town of Rollinsville, we're still responsible for the kids, whether they're 
anywhere else. Absolutely. Our, the town of Rollins is still going to be responsible for them, whether there's everybody still in, in the Rollins Street grade school or more get transitioned over. It's still, the 7 through 12 are still our kids that have to be looked at. That might be a good FAQ to add. That yeah, are you, good. is this part of the sixth grade question? And say no, it's I'll not. Put that yeah, right. <laughs> it's absolutely not. <laughs> Charlie. No, I think, well, actually, June 3rd is probably going to be a key date. Yeah. Because you'll be able to talk to Summersworth, and that will help you decide which way you're going in a direction. Yep. yep. It'll give us some options, it'll help us set the tone. So. That's a great segue. And if you guys are good, we'll let Dr. Get one more thing. The face to face got me to remember that PTO is planning an ice cream social. Yeah. Which might be a good time to have a table with some flyers yeah. if, if we're yeah, Absolutely. What's the date for the fun? Um, the 5th, 6th yes. to 7 30. Okay. Yes. Let's sign up later on. Hopefully, it should be available. Let us know the flyers. No, yeah, it's going to be in the playground. Yeah. Just as a flyer. Oh, you will? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I think just having somebody around who, you know, <laughs> just to yeah. listen to all of this stuff, where people can ask questions. You know, if we have two of us or yeah. something just out there, people can ask questions. You yeah. can give it, bring this later, come back. I think it would be very helpful. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Get some more folks who aren't parents of students to yeah. buy yeah. ice cream because who doesn't like ice cream? Right. One other thing, I mean, I'm still wanting to stay is with SAU, but <clears throat> I do have a little connection with Chester Academy. So, I mean, maybe if you wanted to ask those people to come over and they're the ones, find out how much they actually end up paying for putting it out there. But they are grades one through eight, I mean, K through eight. So. Thank you. So, if everybody's good, I think we have a, a strong start to our communication plan, but pretty proactive in terms of getting out there. Right? Um, and we can rotate, you know, share things around and, and get things moving. Um, we should probably, who do we need to speak to for the town website? Is it Tamara? Or so, Tia, Tia, Pass. Tia Pass. Do you want me to, do you, does anyone have a connection with you? Do you mind just asking if we can get a space? Oh, on the website itself? I, sure. think, I think that's probably a good that makes neutral sense. place that yeah. people can go. Yeah, I went there this, this morning and while I saw it, it seems like if you follow the school, Rollinsford, it goes to the SAU website. It does. I think it should probably be more town specific. Yeah, yeah. I see what she can do there. Or we can link back and forth. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jeff, for spearheading that conversation. So here we go. Let's talk about summer's work. All right. Well, the, the, for everybody's information, the joint meeting between the two committees is going to be on June 3rd. It's going to be at the Career Tech Center in Summersworth uh, at Mulligan's Grill, which is, if you're, if you're familiar with the high school, if you're looking at the high school, uh, the CTC Center at Mulligan's Grill is in the Career Tech Center around the right side and in the back. So you can just come in there and that's, that's the student-run uh, restaurant area. That's at 5.30 p.m. on June 3rd, so that's when it's, it's going to be. Um, I'm going to be running the meeting, and my, my plan for the meeting is to, um, a couple of things, make sure that both sides kind of uh, have an opportunity to express what's important to them, what are they looking to get out of the process, you know, what are the kind of must-haves in, in, in whatever decision is made, uh, and I also hope that I can get anything that's off the table because, quite frankly, if it's not a possibility from either your side or their side, why waste your time on it? Right. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can get any, any kind of information from, from either side about, uh, you know, things that are, we're definitely not interested in this. Uh, so that will help guide it as well. Because I know I, I did look through the, the meeting minutes from the past, yep. from this year. They were helpful. And I, I never really got a sense of what their objectives or goals were for this. And, yep. I mean, do they, other than it seemed to be something that, a process that started, I'm not sure I, I understand well, what were the things that caused that process to really start. Yeah, I can fill you in on, 
on some things that were mentioned in, in either the school board meetings, the town meetings, or whatever. And all that's public information, so I would tell them what you're doing, and I'm telling you what they're doing. So it, there's no secrets there. Um, one of the things that really has struck me in the two committees is both of you have very diverse committees. They're not run by the school board. They're not dominated by the school board or, or anybody else. Um, you've got a lot of uh, community members and, and you know different uh, entities represented at your committees. They're the same way. Uh, so you know, don't feel like one's dealing with the school board. You've got a lot of different community members on there, so that's good. Um, I think that from from a few things that were mentioned were, uh, you know, certainly cost is, is always something that keeps coming up in any discussions. Um, it was mentioned at the start of the process that, that uh, Summersworth was looking for complete autonomy in any decision making. So any, any decision making when it comes to my office in, in staffing, in, in uh, how it's run, what's purchased, you know, basically the, the overall decision making that's come up a number of times. Um, Has that been a problem in the past? Um, well, I've been there a year and it hasn't been a problem for me. So, so and that's my <laughs> Another quick question relates to how is the decision making currently happening? It's my understanding that Rollinsburg is only represented by about 17% of the SAU. Well, we well, anyway, were probably about 20-25% of the yeah, it's more than that. You've got five board members, they've got nine board members. So if you're at full strength at the meeting for a staffing uh, decision or other decisions, then it's it's majority from that, so nine and five. You always have a majority. Have right, a majority. I was going to ask that, too. <laughs> <laughs> there has it, never been a decision that's gone that was, our way. Yeah, that was it. that was kind of thrown out of whack on some of the things that were said on Fosters because Rollinsford has never had a say on how the school runs their Summersworth runs their schools. Or even with regard to the SAU, there's a discussion. Sometimes there's disagreement, but they always have a majority. But in that discussion, were there ever any things that Rollinsford walked out at in disagreement with strongly enough that it Matter. Um, I can think of one instance, and unfortunately, it was in non-public, so mm -hmm. none yeah. of us can talk so about it. So it happens once right. in a while. Once in a while, there was a heated discussion for sure. It was an important issue, um, but they okay. have the votes at yeah. the end of the day. So there's discussions and input, and sometimes there's a little disagreement. But you know, I would say 99% of the time, it's a very collegial environment. And Everybody gets along well, yeah. Yeah. and disagreements are even, you know, dealt with cordially. In my experience, it's been what five years, a couple of years for you. This is my third year. Okay. And there was also some discussion about uh, with the students now going to Marshwood. There, there's really nothing holding the two entities together other than. The SAE services. Which is revenue. For some it is. It's revenue. Well, it's not it's not revenue for summer's worth, it's revenue, revenue for, the for the SAU. The SAU. Right. But it's part of a big, you know, it's a little piece of a bigger package. Right. So I mean if there were any kind of separation, you know, obviously that's $184,000 and less for the SAU office, whoever is running that. I don't know if Summersworth has that. And then if you were to separate, then you would have to, you know, you've got $184,000 to, 184, to kind of break even for services. Would that be, it'd be hard for both of them? And so I don't know financially when we broke from the, when the area agreement stopped. Mm -hmm. We, it's like stuff in the 80s, I want to say. Well, we kept renewing it. Or See, we didn't go on the debt when they um, renovated the high school. That was the kind of beginning. And that was like in the late 80s or from the 90s. And then the conversation about the, removing ourselves from the area agreement. I don't think we ever had any intention of going back into the area agreement with Summersworth. It would be 
under some other mechanism, which is when I was about when I moved to town. You know, I was looking at Dover and Co Brown and, and Oyster River, and Summersworth was part of that. Oyster River used to be. They were part of Oyster River in the early 80s. Summersworth okay. and Rollins were okay. part of Oyster River. Some water guess they use. Yeah, and then some, something happened and we teamed up. I think they kicked us all out. <laughs> no, Oyster River decided to go on their own. They were on their own. Yeah. Got it. Well, they were leaving, leaving, but they were still three towns, so. Yeah. So, just from some of the things that I hear, that 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 created some animosity between the towns, and some of whether it was public comment or just sentiment between the towns, which is probably what continues to linger. Yeah. What are we five years into the agreement now? Yeah. So. But I do anticipate that it's going to be a very good discussion. You know, I don't think it's. I, I don't anticipate that there's going to be any. Uh, ill will or heated discussion or I think it's going to be good for both sides to hear what what each other has to say and like I said if there's anything that's off the table and what the top priorities are so um, you know and then each committee is going to have to obviously return and at the next meeting have, have discussions on how you want to proceed. So what would we like to express is what we want to get out of this process and the opportunity. So, I mean, I think as a group last time, we, we discussed that we wanted to maintain the quality of education and we wanted to maintain our cost, right? Those were... Well, the quality of education we would always have, but I understand the cost and I guess we're saying, we, we, being from the school services. board standpoint, are we happy with, this, with the service? So we'd like to maintain the, the same of level service. of quality of service. Was there anything else? I don't know if that's more complicated. I just think there are so many pros um, to both sides finding a way to continue to work together, whether that's staying in the same SAU and perhaps maybe they would be open to us having fewer members on the board or no members, um, or if they would be open to contracting. I, I think that it's worth pursuing a way to make that work. I think it would be beneficial to yeah. would, to would both you, towns, really. Would you see any difference between things staying the same with Rollinsford and Summersworth, or Rollinsford doing 100% contracting with Summersworth with with SAU 56? It sounded like we, we get the same. We still have no say. Maybe the cost difference is going to be the same, maybe lower, maybe higher, once they decide what they want to charge for this. But I'm just not getting it. And, you know, of those two options, they seem to be the same to me. Is there any uh, other? Day to day operations, I, I don't think you would see any difference at all. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you wouldn't have a say in, in staffing. Uh, staffing to your office? For the office. Staffing for my office. Right, yeah. not the building. Not the building. It, it, Which we don't have now. The, the building and the kids and the, that's completely that's the separate. Board. Completely there would be one uh, important difference, and that would be the process that we're running through right now. Uh, if uh, it is their SAU and we are contracting with it, I, that is a contract that then has to be renewed every year, every three years, every five years, yeah. whatever it is. I then there is a set window where they can say. We're not interested in renewing it, or we can say we're not interested in renewing yep. it without going through the current legal framework that yep. we're going through right now. Would they be able to dig it? Summersworth be able to dictate the cost that they charge us, or would they more go of like a state guideline formula that we're kind of using now? Um, I would have to check into that whether the state would regulate that off the RSA or not, or whether it could be a, a uh, created. Be. Uh, I would also have to check in on, on your point because um, an SAU can't just kick somebody out. Uh, so I would have to check on what the uh, what, what rights you would have if you're contracting a service, um, whether it would be a you know a five-year agreement or a ten-year agreement, whatever you decide or whether that would have to be a process similar to this approved by the state board. I don't know that. I'll have to check on that. 
So staffing would include your staff and if we had to replace a, um, you, your role as superintendent, that we would not be part of that process if we were contracting. Correct. Unless they, they could possibly invite us. No, I, well, I think that, I mean, you can make anything part of a contract. If, yeah. if we think that's sure. important, and, and that's some of those questions, some of these things on here, if we decide to contract that, we might say part of it is we have to be part of the hiring of the new superintendent, as an example. Maybe that's it, but that, those are some of the items that we need to have a kind of a survey of what we're doing. Um, so, so what would be our motivation to go to contract versus the current state as is? What's the benefit for us? I think benefit is keeping this, keeping our services, but almost easing them, I guess, right? It seems yeah. like the sec maybe the that's second best option. Exactly. That exactly. I'm not saying it's the best, but I would say that's the that would be the negotiation. That might be all that they're, that they're willing to do. Exactly. If they're willing to do anything at all. Right. So yeah. that would be, I mean, we're not saying that the full contract is yeah. off the table. We're not, but we're also right. not saying that the same is right. off the table or going to, you know, if we continue, we'll continue to have five school board members, correct? Right. But maybe not going on the, the SAU board. And so none. So that would be, would that be a contract model if we were to not be on the board, but be part of the SAU? Or be, mm -hmm. or be less, be two right. or three. Yeah, I think there's well, a couple yeah. different scenarios. Right. Maybe yeah. you'd have two or three members, like you said, or maybe that are voting have members. a non-voting member. I, I don't know right. how it would, it would play out and how that would work um, you know, from a legal standpoint if we need a contract. Yeah, I think any of those agreements would be acceptable. And anything you come up with, I would run past the attorney and, and the state board just to make sure that it's reasonable. Um, one other thing to consider is, is not only to, to appease anybody, but at the same time, um, right now you both have choices to make. If you decide we're not going anywhere, um, they could pull up anyway. And at that point, they would have to demonstrate that you have options. Doesn't mean they have to make choices for you. But they could say, all right, you stay where you are with SAU 56, and we are pulling out. Mm -hmm. So you would be SAU 56 in number. Obviously, that would look different. Yeah. Um, and they would pull out, and you'd still have to do something. So you know, you could, uh, that's another, another reason to try to get something done, yeah. if that's the direction you choose to go. Right. Quick, one question. If, say, we meet and we decide yeah, maybe we can make this work if we stay together. Then do we still have to go through this whole process of the town meetings and the yeah, that's state a plan, question. or can we just say, it's cool? Well, that, that's, a, that's a good question, because I thought about that, and, and I, I'm waiting until after I see how that June 3rd meeting yeah. goes. Um, and, you know, if, I don't know whether you would submit parallel plans. Mm -hmm. Let's say you come to... I mean, you're not going to make a decision on June 3rd, but let's say you come to a, some kind of an agreement on a direction. I don't know whether that would mean both of you submit parallel plans to the state or whether you can just submit an agreement. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure legally whether it has to go back to your voters at that point. I, I would have to, it would. Yeah, it's whatever good. direction you pick, I'll, I'll, I'll have to follow through and, yeah. and find out the process with that because I think it does have to go back to the vote. Yeah, that would be nice. If withdrawal, organization, and reorganization is recommended, we must hold a public hearing. If not, withdrawal, organization, reorganization, we must present at the annual school board meeting for a vote and have a majority vote. Oh. Yeah. Is what I, that's what I read, anyways, when I read the chair of one this morning. So my guess yeah, is it will go. It's pretty specific. My guess is that both, if, if you come to an agreement, then you could submit parallel plans to the the State Board of Education for their approval, and then you would go back to, they'd go to the City Council, you go to the community, yeah. and handle it that way. So, but I don't know, we're not, when we talk to Summersworth, 
going out on our own is not off the table for us, right? Or joining another SAU, we don't know what our options are, but that's not off the table for us either. So we still, I think the, the message is we want to work with you, but we still are we still can explore and will explore if we need to other options. I think either way we need to at least look at the cost of the of the other options and right. even if we can come to an agreement just to like you said before, do due diligence and right. bring all the options back to the voters. How do people feel about that? I think it's in the best interest of both towns to stay together. <laughs> I don't even know why this is happening. I mean, this was a reaction, from what I can tell, this was a reaction to, to the withdrawal request or, or, or vote within Summersworth, right? We didn't initiate this. In the, in the minutes it says we did. Well, I can add some clarity to that. The, the original process was initiated through Summersworth. They, were, they decided uh, that they were going to move forward. The city council decided they were going to support that, uh, and the committee was developed. My recommendation, along with the school board uh, association's recommendation, their attorney, was that you've got two choices at that point. Sit back and watch their process and react to what happens, or start your own process and have all of the options available to you. So that's why the recommendation was start your own committee, then you're controlling your your options. I think uh, I, if somebody wants to go out and price out a part-time superintendent, uh, as well as figure out how much space uh, I, they would need for an office uh, and additional uh, contracted services, uh, that's great. I personally, I'm not planning on putting in that effort until after the meeting with the summer's worth. Mm -hmm. I, have a spread, I have a spreadsheet of all the superintendent um, salaries. So oh, if true. Dr. Godowski can give us, um, it's all, public. I just don't know if it's fully loaded costs or not, but it's you know, a couple of pieces of information I need to know, but what would be a like for like, you know, let's pick a couple towns and give a range. And then I, I don't think we know though, do we need a business administrator? Do we need, we, we probably need a special education, right? So there are I, things we do need. Yeah, I can work with the school board association with getting you a basic cost as to ballpark, you know, what it might look like. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a going rate for, you know, per hour for part time superintendents and business administrators, and we do put that together. I mean, it's not going to be down to the penny, but it would give you a pretty good idea. Well, wouldn't that be a comparison of what we currently pay to SE 56 as far as our 16%? If you, I, mean, could, I mean, that would be a real easy, clean way to do yeah. it, is just take it and take 16%. And, I mean, you could do that. No, no, I'm just saying, let's say if you, did, if you did that process of understanding, oh, what would it cost for a business administrator, special ed, yeah. um, and et cetera, a part-time superintendent, whatever those numbers are, from Rollins' for perspective, is a comparison to what we're currently paying 56 for those exact same services. So, from a taxpayer standpoint, if that number comes up to 250 grand, that's a lot more expensive than what we're currently paying. If it comes up to 150, well, it's it's an interest. Maybe so some of that is that. some of that is going to be um, economy of scale too. Absolutely, I mean, you know, yeah. get your salaries and benefits. Those are those are those are pretty easy. Uh, you know, what are you going to pay for um, rent? rent? Mm -hmm. What are you going to pay for connectivity? Mm -hmm. What are you going to pay for, you know, hardware, yeah. uh, furniture? Where is it going to be located? Those types of things. Yes, yeah, those are other things that have to go into. Yeah, and those really vary community to community. Are you, are you going to rent some place? Do you have room in your school that you can just filter in? You know, all of those factors really have to be taken into consideration. Those have to be taken into consideration. To the personal costs that we're talking about. No, I, I don't even mean just the cost of it, but just the organization and where are we going to oh, yeah, put it and so right, how's it going to work and we've got to get it done in time. And Maybe with it all, is, is there a copy of the SAU budget? It's like in here. But when you think about just taking that, let's say the 183 number and say six hours, allocate your cost to six hours a week, right? So it's like, Let's be realistic. We're not 
we're going to need, I think, more than six hours a week for superintendent services. We're going to probably, I don't know how much we're going to need for special education. I don't know what we're going to need for kind of a, we probably have a hybrid HR business manager, contract manager. So, you know, it's, I don't think that we can just kind of do the, the math and cut it off. So maybe for a, a light school district with yeah. number of students, yeah. number of buildings, number of staff, what would we? I, I can give you a guesstimate budget. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't want anybody to hold me to it. Right? Yeah. Oh, that part would be good to like draft. Yeah. 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 Even, <laughs> even if somebody just knows uh, which of these SAUs uh, is, most, is closest to our demographics, right. we could just take what they're paying. Right. Right. Like Chester. That's close okay. Yeah. yeah. If anybody can ask Chester what they're paying for it's their SAUs. It's gone to website. It's, really, it's their school budget. Yeah. 
That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Does anyone have anything else before we close the meeting? So the town will ultimately vote on our recommendation. Mm -hmm. And we're only going to put out one recommendation, mm -hmm. not a choice. Yeah. And it'll be the one that the school board has, the oh. Ed Department of Education has a has a the plan goes from this committee to do the state board of education. They, they, they're not going to they're not going to evaluate your plan. All they're going to do is make sure that both entities are taking care of their options. So. All right. So if nothing else, at some point I will close tonight's meeting. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for being here.